Okay, so 3G, um, still unit 3, stuff about polygons and parallel lines and stuff like that. All right, so uh, first question. Is there a value of x such that an equilateral triangle, so remember equilateral means all sides are the same, lateral being sides, uh, can, they, can they have side lengths of x, 2x minus 5, and 10 minus x? So let's draw an equilateral triangle. And remember, if it's equilateral, it's also equiangular, so all the angles will be the same size. Side lengths are x, 2x minus 5, and 10 minus x. If it's equilateral, all the sides have to be the same. So if it's equilateral, then we know that x and 2x minus 5 and 10 minus x should all be equal to each other. So let's pick a couple of them. Let's pick these two. It doesn't really matter which two you pick. So if we pick these two, uh, if I subtract 2x from both sides, I get negative 1x equals negative 5. And then that means that x equals positive 5. And then uh, let's, so, so if these two sides are the same, x would have to be 5. So then let's plug in 5 and see what all the sides are. So one side is just x, so that's 5. One side is 2x minus 5, which is 10 minus 5. 2 times 5 minus 5, which is 5. And the other side is 10 minus x, which is 10 minus 5, which is 5. Well, all the sides are the same, so it works. Right? If uh, x equals 5, then all three sides have the same length. Now, if you had picked these two uh, um, sides to work with and you found x equals 5 and you plug it into here and here and here and you got three different side lengths, well then no, it's not possible. Right. Okay, number two. Find values for x, y, and z in the diagram. Now this one, we don't have any parallel lines, so we're going to be using triangle properties here. Um, so let's see, we've got a 140 over here. So that total is 180. So this one has to be 40. Um, let's see, this angle is 87. So this one vertical to it is 87. And then these add up to 180 right here because that's a straight angle. So if you did 180 minus 87, you get 93. So these angles are 93. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? Um, x. We can solve for x at this point because I've got a triangle with two angles that I know in it. So I know that 40 plus 87 plus x is going to be 180. So if I solve for x, let's see, that's 127. 180 minus 127 will be 53. So x is 53. Um, I know that the, whoops, let me change color. These three angles, 76, Y, and X, form a straight angle. So 76 plus Y plus X equals 180. Uh, and X is 53, so I can substitute that in there. Uh, so let's see, that would make y 51. So now we have y. So here's x, here's y. So this is 51. And then we've got this triangle to work with right here. So you could do, uh, let's see, 93 plus 51 plus z has to be 180. And if you work out what z is, you end up z has to be 36. Okay, let's take a look at number three. So three says, find the measurements of angles one and two. Okay, so there are going to be a couple different ways of doing this one. 
Um, let's see what we've got here. Uh, okay, we should note this line and this line are parallel. So let me draw this out a little bit. Um, now note the 30 is not this angle, right? The 30 is only part of that. 30 only goes to here. Uh, I know that this one's 85. So if I actually, let me slide this over so it's easier to see. This one's 85. This one right here would end up having to be uh, supplementary with the 85 because these are same side interior angles. Um, so 85 plus something would equal 180. And something would end up being uh, 95 degrees. So that was this angle right here. So that's 95 degrees. OK. Uh, well, these three angles put together have to be 180. So 30 plus 95 plus y, let's say, equals 180. And if you solve for y, you end up with 55 degrees. So I'll write it out. 180 minus 30 plus 95 together. So y ends up being, what did I say, 55. So let me fill that in here. Then I got a triangle over here, a right triangle. So this is 90. So then I can say, well, 55 plus 90 plus measurement of angle 1 equals 180. So angle 1 is going to be 180 minus the 55 and 90 put together, which ends up being 35 degrees. So let's see, what else can we figure out here? Uh, let me get rid of some of this. Let me highlight the other parallel lines. So this line here, oh, sorry. This line here is parallel to the bottom line here. And I'm going to draw this line. And we know that this is 90 right there. So let me slide this over. Oh, hold on. OK. So uh, this one's 90 down here in the bottom uh, uh, left part of this diagram. If you got parallel lines and one of them's perpendicular to the transversal, the other one's got to be perpendicular too. So all these guys are going to be 90. And you can do that a variety of ways. You could use like altered interiors to get this one's 90, and then it's pretty quick to get all four 90. So this one's 90 here, which means this whole angle back up in the original picture is 90, uh, which means this one's 55. Oh, actually, I now see a much quicker way of getting that 55. Here's some alternate interior angles right there. Right. So if this one's 55, this one's 55. OK. Uh, angle 2, you could get a couple ways. One easier way would be to look at these parallel lines with this transversal. So if this one's 55, here's angle 2 right here, by the way. Well, uh, let's see. We could do like alternate interiors here to get that that's 55. And then these have to add up to 180. So measurement of 2 equals 180 minus 55. So 125. You could also say that these two angles are same side interior, so they're supplementary. So uh, there are a few different ways of getting it. Um, you could even, some people tend to see this shape going on here. 
this one. Because we did a problem like that at some point in class. And then you can draw in either a perpendicular here, you could extend one of these lines. Uh, there are a lot of different things you could do. You could slice through this way and then say, I'll make this one parallel too. So this one's got to be 30 because here's alternate interiors. So then this one's got to be 55 because it adds up to 85. And then you got another Z shape right here. So this one's 55. And then you can do 180 for that straight angle to get 125 there. So there are lots of different things you could extend to try to solve this problem. Okay, let's move on. Let's take a look at number four. Okay, a right isosceles triangle has congruent sides with length. Oh, lovely. 2x squared minus 7x and 5x minus 10. Okay, so if it's a right triangle and it's isosceles, the hypotenuse has to be the longest side. So it's these two sides that are going to be the same. And one of them is 2x squared minus 7x, and the other is 5x minus 10. So the question is, how long is this? Okay, now the hint says try to solve for x before actually trying to do this. And the reason I say that is because a lot of students try to jump right into Pythag and say 2x squared minus 7x squared plus 5x minus 10 squared equals c squared. But you're not going to get a number out of this, and foiling out these terms is not going to be fun. So, And you're going to have all these x terms, so you can't do anything with that anyway. So what we really need to do is figure out a way to get x before we do pi bag. So uh, we know that these two sides are congruent, so the lengths have to be the same. So if the lengths are the same, then they're equal. Right? And I'll write that because it's isosceles triangle. Well, there's an x squared term, some x terms, and some units. So we're going to get them all to one side. Minus 5x and then plus 10 to both sides equals 0, right? We want it to equal 0. And if I simplify a little bit, it's 2x squared minus 12x plus 10 equals 0. And before I, I plug this into the quadratic formula, which you could do right now, you could also simplify both sides, divide by 2. So then this turns into x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. And then you have a couple options how you want to solve it. If you remember, if you're factoring pretty well, you could solve this by factoring. This turns into an x times an x term equals 0. So uh, the two numbers here have to multiply to 5 but add to negative 6. I don't know if you remember this sort of process. Um, but if you use negative 5 and negative 1, and you foil this out, you end up with that x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. So then the way to solve these is x minus 5 is 0, or x minus 1 is 0. Because if you multiply two things together to get 0, either this or this has to be 0. So then x equals 5, or x equals 1. And then if you take these answers and check them, plug it in 5, you get 15 here plug it in 5 up here, you'll get 15. But if you plugged in 1 down here, you get 5 minus 10, which is negative 5. So the 1 doesn't really make sense for the problem. Okay, now, let's say you're not great with factoring. Okay, we got another method now, which is the quadratic formula. So A would be 1, B would be negative 6, C would be 5. And we're going to plug into the quadratic formula, which is negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Um, and uh, we can use our calculator for this. So I'm going to store these letters a, b, c. So a is 1. So I'm going to hit 1, store as alpha a, the green letter. So i got to hit the green button. And then negative 6, not minus 6. If you do minus 6, whoops. Yeah, if you do minus 6, you'll probably get some sort of weird thing going on. Minus 6 stores B. Let's see what it does. Whoops. So the answer should be there, minus 6. It'll probably give an error, syntax error. If I go to the error, 
to put the cursor right there because it's telling you something's wrong with how that's worded. You're not supposed to say minus six, you're supposed to say negative six, so you gotta hit the negative button down here instead. Stored as B, and then five is stored as C. And then we'll type in the quadratic formula. So I need the fraction symbol. So that's under alpha F1 right here. And then numerator over denominator. And then I'm doing negative B. And I'll do the plus version first. B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And then enter. So one of my answers is x equals 5, which is good because that's what we got the factoring way. Or if I just come back up here and then scroll over, I need to change that plus to a minus to get the other answer. And the other answer is 1. But remember, the 1 didn't work when we checked it earlier, so it's got to be 5. The question is, what's the hypotenuse? Well, if we plug in the 5, then we get 5 times 5 minus 10 is 15. If I plug in 5 over here, it's 5 squared, so 25 minus 7 times 5. So that's 50 minus 35 is 15. So what we've got is a triangle that's a right triangle, 15, 15, and C. So now we do pi tag squared plus 15 squared equals c squared. So it's going to be 225 plus 225 equals c squared. So that's 450 equals c squared. So that's root 450 is c. Um, which, by the way, if you're curious, it's about 21.213. And the way you can do that on the calculator uh, we've got root. So here's the root button in blue. So blue root 450 and then you can just hit enter so there you go okay all right uh one last problem what's the measure of one angle of a five-pointed star and the hint for this is this pentagon in the middle ends up being a regular pentagon so i'll write that here hint pentagon in the middle is regular. Okay, remember regular means all the angles are the same and all the sides are the same. So, the pentagon in the middle has five sides, so the total degrees of the pentagon is going to be 5 minus 2 times 180. So that's 3 times 180, which is 540. And then each angle, since they're all the same, is going to be 540 divided by the number of angles, which is 5. So each angle is going to be 108. So 108 here, 108 here, 108, 108, 108. Okay. Well, let's look at one of these triangles attached to it. Well, that's a straight angle. So this right here is going to be 180 minus 108, which is 72. So all these base angles in these triangles are going to be 72 degrees. This is the angle we're looking for. I'll call that x. So 72 plus 72 plus x is going to be 180 because it's a triangle. So that's 144 plus x equals 180. X ends up being 36. So one angle of the star, 36 degrees. Okay, hope that helps a little bit. I'll see you soon.